What's going on everybody? My name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicago Bulls ended up losing another game and this time it's against the New York Knicks. A couple of days ago, I think four days ago now, we were able to defeat the New York Knicks of what was such a big game for the Chicago Bulls. But at the end of the day, we faced them again and this time we couldn't get on the other side of the win. Now, did the Bulls play terribly today? No, they did not. Um, I think if anyone actually thinks the Bulls play terribly, probably didn't necessarily watch the game. But it's very similar to Orlando. And in the way that it's similar to Orlando is that the Knicks managed that game out to perfection and did what a good team does. They picked up every single piece of momentum they could. Every time the Bulls responded, the Knicks would respond right back. It's like it's like a boxing fight. The Bulls throw a punch and the Knicks counter punch until eventually the Bulls just couldn't have any more fight to give. And that's kind of how I feel with this type of game with the Knicks. And we'll talk a little bit about it in this video. But before we get any further, if you like the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls, their game today, and your player of the game. We ended up losing this game 128 to 117. And oh boy, was this back and forth. Like I said just a couple of seconds ago, the Bulls fought in this game. There is no denying that the Bulls scratched and clawed their way to try and win this one. You could tell by the way that they were playing how much this game meant to them. And that is always going to be a positive, even in a loss. When you can truly see what a game means to a player, means to a team... That's something I'm going to take as a positive every single day. 117 points on the night is a great return for the Chicago Bulls. Our offense was there. DeRozan, fantastic game offensively. Kobe White, fantastic game offensively. Nikola Vucevic, fantastic game offensively. Our bench wasn't too bad offensively today either. There was a lot of, po at least for the first half. Maybe the second half it was bad. First half, it wasn't that bad. We actually outscored the Knicks on the bench in the first half. But we genuinely fought really well in this game to kind of make this a fight and make this a game that the Knicks had to scratch and claw for. But as I mentioned before, the Knicks wanted this game more. Both teams had something to fight for. The Knicks are trying to secure home court advantage in the playoffs with that fourth seeded position. Could potentially go upwards, if I'm not mistaken as well. You know, They could go to third or something like that. I'm not too sure. I don't think it's out of the question. And then for the Bulls, we're trying to fight for home court advantage in the playing tournament. So in two different spectrums of our season, the Knicks are clearly the better team. We know that already. It's not even a discussion at this point. But the game meant something to both teams. And the Knicks, this time out, came out with all guns blazing and ready to go. Yes, the Bulls fought, and I will take the Bulls fighting every single time. It's frustrating when we lose. It's frustrating how we're so inconsistent. We can't get a good string of games together. It's all frustrating in that regard. But we still fought hard, and we just lost to a team that is better, and a team that managed it well. And look, again, I know we're saying that the Knicks managed it well, but there were some frustrating elements in our game. Um, first and foremost, I don't know how OG Ananobi did not get that fifth foul earlier. I don't know how many fouls he ended up on, but I don't think he got fouled out of the game. Um, there was one specific call, and I don't want to be nitpicking on certain situations, but that one specific call really made my brain kind of spiral a little bit. Like, I couldn't believe what I just saw. Uh, so basically, uh, OG Ananobi had his hand on DeMar DeRozan, and DeMar DeRozan smart enough to see the contact um, and take the shot, forcing the foul from OG Ananobi. But they called a foul on Mitchell Robinson, who was barely in the play. And I said in the stream, he must have breathed too hard. It distracted DeRozan on his shot or something. I don't know what it was. But I don't know how that foul was not on OG Ananobi. And that could have been a game changer at the time. You send OG Ananobi out of the game quicker, or he stays in the game and he gets that fifth foul because he fouled right after the possession afterwards. And that could have been a big moment for the Bulls. Um, that simply we didn't take advantage of, and the refs kind of cost us in that regard. But that's just one play. I'm not having a go at the refs for the entire game. I don't think this was massively um, an injustice type of game. You know, the first game against the Knicks, there were so many controversies, I couldn't even describe it. I definitely don't think this game fits in that discussion. That was just one play that really upset me. But, you know, again, that, that could have been a big play for the Bulls. Nonetheless... I think the game was fairly was called fairly, I would say. I think both teams got their respective thousand free throws and well-deserved as well. 
And I, another thing that really upset me today was Andre Drummond's injury. First and foremost, before we get into that, let's talk about this self alley oop that just was completely like, what did we? That that's shacked in a full moment right there. The Tory Cray gets a steal, I believe. Goes for the self alley oop. Drummond chasing behind him, and they both jump for the same alley oop, and the ball doesn't go in for either of them. The ball ends up falling out of bounds, I think. Or actually, no, it, the Knicks get the rebound because we missed it. And the Knicks caused an offensive foul the other way anyway. So they didn't score from that. But that's a shacked in a full moment. Drummond and Tory Craig going for the same alley-oop. What is wrong with the Bulls, man? How could no one communicate in transition? How could Tory Craig not communicate with Drummond saying, leave it, it's for me? Or why can't o Andre Drummond say, I'm coming in hot, throw it to me, something. If you're going to do a highlight play, at least communicate it, man. Like, oh, you could see that possession right there sums up the Bulls season. Just absolute mediocrity on that possession. And it's disgusting and it's it's appalling. And look, we're not the type of team anyway to be showing highlights out there. You know, we're the ninth seed. We have a very bad record. We're not a good team. So yeah, sh sure, have your highlights, but do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right. Zach Levine, when he does a 360 layup, he doesn't miss them. Or 360 dunk. Or, 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 or a windmill dunk. He doesn't miss them. You know what I mean? If you're going to do it, and you're going to show out, and you're going to be a highlight real team, do it right. Don't go for the same alley-oop. I mean, uh, surely that's just... Anyway. Um, yeah, the Andre Drummond injury as well. Uh, that sucks to see because I pretty much consider our season over if Andre Drummond's out for a long period of time. I said it in the stream. I do not think we beat Atlanta without Andre Drummond. He's the secret weapon. He's the guy that I think should be starting against Atlanta over Vucevic. He stops the pick and rolls better. He's a better rebounder. He's a better shot blocker. I think he better matches up compared to Clint Capella. I think he can keep Clint Capella quiet in that game. I really believe that in my heart. And if Andre Drummond misses that game against the Hawks and he's out for the season or he's out until the playoffs, you know, if we can make the playoffs... Our season's over. Call it a day. Call it a week. Because next week, our season will end if Andre Drummond doesn't play. I really believe it. With plus all the other injuries that we've sustained. With Zach Levine, Patrick Williams, Lonzo Ball, uh, Julian Phillips. Too many injuries to count. And Io didn't even play today as well. So all these injuries piling up. A lot of players still playing injured as well. We're a broken team. And... I just wish the best for Andre Drummond. Of course, his health is but more than important than anything. And if he has to sit out, he has to sit out. It is what it is. But it's going to absolutely suck. He got carried out on a wheelchair for crying out loud. If that doesn't scream, fear for the worst, I don't know what will. And we have to talk about how the Bulls guarded Jalen Brunson and their three-point shooters today, just in general. The Knicks were much more lethal from the three-point line than the Bulls, and simply put, much more lethal from the three-point line compared to their last game that we faced against them. The Knicks from the three-point line ended up making um, 17, I believe, from 36. The Bulls only made 10 three-point shots in this game. Um... But Jalen Bronson was on a different level today. I think he had 44 points and 8 assists. And he dominated in every way. Taking contested layups left, right, and center. Shooting dagger threes, sidestepping threes, step back threes, and every single three you can imagine. And the playmaking was lethal from the Knicks as well. They ripped us apart on the defensive end in that third quarter and the fourth quarter as well. So, in, in a nutshell, the, the Knicks played, I think, a better team game. I think they had the better players to step up in big moments. And I, I think they managed the game to perfection. And that's why they're walking away with a 128-point performance and the win in Chicago. And the Bulls are walking away with a valiant effort, but no win to show for it. Thankfully, though, Atlanta lost, the, lost against the Heat. And they've lost their last couple of games, which is huge. Because it, it means no matter what mistake we make, we're still ahead in the ninth seed. We still have our advantages in the ninth seed. We've got the Pistons and we've got the Wizards coming up. The Hawks have Charlotte tomorrow after a double overtime game and they've got Minnesota. They've got the harder schedule. They've got the Pacers coming up soon as well. So this is our chance. These next two games, you win them, you get the ninth seed. You lose them, you put it in jeopardy. Our player of the game, my player of the game at least, is DeMar DeRozan. Vucevic had a good game efficiency-wise, but I think DeMar carried us out of some moments where we needed runs. I think he delivered in those areas. And Vucevic, I don't think, was that great defensively today. 
What do you think? Thank you for watching. Drop a like and a follow and or subscribe if you are new. I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.